So what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to have a look at all the features that the Eclipse debugger uh, has in store for you. And we're going to see how you can actually use them. So I think you're actually being pretty lazy because it's all in the Eclipse help as well. There's a tips and tricks section which you can just use, but uh, here you can see it in action. So uh, a little bit about me, uh, I'm a software developer from uh, Bremen, which is there in northern Germany. Most people probably know the city for the beer and uh, the story about the Bremen Town musicians. I'm also in the organization team for uh, some conferences and the local Java user group. Um, debugging is uh, specified as the process of finding and resolving defects or problems in the computer program that uh, prevent correct operation of a computer or system. I think you're all aware of the, of the definition, but I thought I'd start with that. There's uh, several debugging tactics, um, um, which uh, we only do the interactive debugging session today, but there are a lot of other techniques, like uh, you probably all started with doing a system of print lines, right, and seeing what is happening in your program. and. Um, a little bit about the history. So a lot of people say that uh, Grace Hopper coined the, the term of uh, debugging. I think she might have done it or introduced it into computer science, but uh, it was around a long time before that. So they did actually found a, a real bug, a moth in a Mark II computer. And uh, so they, they, something didn't really work. So they found uh, this uh, moth over there uh, in, the, in the relay of the Mark II computer and removed it. And so she said they debugged the computer, right? But uh, the term uh, was uh, used much earlier in, uh, for, by Thomas Edison, for example, but also in, uh, for some other science people, who said uh, in a letter to an associate, uh, uh, he explained bugs as little faults and difficulties um, that are uh, so called and that you have to overcome. So the term has been around much earlier before it was actually used in computer science. So that uh, was basically all of my slides. So let's switch uh, to Eclipse and uh, see what we can do with the debugger. So this is my uh, little application over here. And um, I'm the person over here and uh, I'm going to a boat hire and I'm going to hire a boat. And uh, let's see what this program does by uh, simply running it. And uh, it says, you are too young, and then you can't read it anymore. So here's some uh, word wrap, which you can turn on, actually, uh, to make it readable, which uh, you are too young. Sorry. OK. And um, so uh, what we want to do is actually to debug this and find out why it says, you are too young. So we're going to the debug configurations and uh, turn on a little marker here that says a stop and main method. So even if we don't set any breakpoints, we want to see when we start debugging, right? So sometimes there's somebody calling, customers calling, and then we don't want to uh, have the program running all the way through uh, because we forgot to set some breakpoints. So if I'm uh, going to debug it uh, right now, uh, it will stop in the main method. I don't have any breakpoint here. It will just uh, stop over here. And uh, then I can uh, use uh, some stepping operations. So you can see here what uh, shortcuts I'm using. It's a uh, step in two uh, for the debugging operation. And if I just uh, let it run, it's going to stop here at the exception. So it's uh, now a new setting in the Eclipse debugger settings that it will always stop at uh, uncaught exceptions in your own code. And uh, so this is where we are right now. And uh, if we want to know what is actually happening, so the person's age is uh, below 35, it says we are too young. Uh, I'm actually not 31 anymore, so I can actually change it to 35. But then I would have had to restart the program. Uh, what I can also do is uh, here say drop to frame. Then I restart that method from the beginning again. And uh, then I just uh, step into the constructor over here. And uh, what I do, I just change the age over here. So I can just click on here and edit the value and I press enter and it will now use the new value. Let's make it actually visible. So over here uh, we have uh, our object. So I increased the font size quite a bit, so it's kind of hard to read. It will now show here the fully qualified name of the person or to say the system hash code, which is not really usable as a value, right? So what we want to do here is probably provide a detail formatter because we don't have any to string method. We just uh, use a detail formatter and say, uh, please display the name and the age for every object over here. So I'm sorry, I, I couldn't find out how to actually make the font bigger in this one. Um, but now we are missing the information about the actual object we are having, right? So we probably want to enable some uh, columns over here and say uh, select columns and say please also uh, show the actual type. 
and uh, show the instance ID. We can also say, uh, show the declare type as well, which uh, sometimes is useful if you're uh, dealing with uh, interfaces to actually see what type is uh, being declared. Now we see uh, it's a person and uh, we can see the detail formatter output as well. So it actually worked, right? So in our, in our object, we now have the new value um, 35, although we didn't uh, change anything. So in this example, it would have been very easy to actually restart the application, but sometimes you're in the middle of a debugging process and you can't restart the application. But you want to find out uh, what would happen if you actually had the correct value at that point and don't restart the whole debugging process again. And then it can be very useful to actually use that. So now it runs through. Um, now we have another problem here because uh, the boat hire gave me the boat Titanic. I probably don't want to write on the Titanic, right? Because, you know, there was some incident. And also there's something weird happening with my name over here. So now I got an X in front of my name. So we should probably fix that as well. To find out which other boats are available, because I don't know at the moment, um, we quickly go into the boat and say, okay, we want to actually know where the boats are constructed from or where the class is loaded. So we can and click in front of the class and set a class breakpoint to find out when the class is loaded. We also probably know where directly it gets constructed because sometimes there's a static fields and the class gets loaded much earlier. Um, so here we set a breakpoint on the constructor as well. And for the name, we just want to print out all the names of all the boats. We don't always want to stop. We don't want to stop uh, the debugging session, but still print something out and don't write any code directly in the application because sometimes we can't because we're using a library where we can't change the code, for example. Um, then we can uh, say a uh, so-called trace point. You don't find it in the context menu, you only find it in the bigger menu. You can actually enable an option to show the full menu in the context menu as well, but if you can't find it, go to the menu. They sometimes have uh, a lot more options than the context menus. So we say uh, toggle trace point over here. Uh, what a trace point does is you could actually uh, write it on your own as well. So it's a conditional breakpoint without any condition over here. So in this case, it says it just says a system out print line. Um, it usually takes uh, the name of the method we are currently using. That's the default for a trace point. We just want to print out the name over here, so I change it. You can also have some other options over here in the conditional breakpoints. Uh, for example, test for a certain condition that you only want to stop if uh, the name is uh, Titanic, for example, right? And you can also say, okay, suspend only when the value changes. So you're not giving a certain value in there, but you say whenever the value is changing uh, compared to the previous value we have seen, please stop again. You can also say that you don't uh, want to suspend only this thread, but the whole VM. So if you're doing some concurrency stuff, for example, it might be useful to actually suspend the whole VM and not only the current thread. You can also say you uh, want to want to stop after like 100 hits with the hit count and a trigger point uh, we, we see in the end. So um, what I didn't show and probably can't show because you can't read it from the back, but um, you have full content assist support here as well, right? Okay, so uh, this is what we did now and uh, with the person, the person name, something weird is happening with the person name, right? So we want to see what is happening with the person name and we can set a breakpoint uh, on the field over here. Uh, this currently says um, uh, field access and field modification. We probably don't want the access of the field because probably nothing bad is going to happen with, uh, with the access of the field. So we can say breakpoint properties and uh, only do it on modification. We also want to set um, a breakpoint on the setter of the name method. Um, because I'm using Lombok, I can't directly set a breakpoint on the setter here because I don't have any code for it. But I can go to the outline, so this is actually very useful. This is why I used Lombok here ex uh, in, in this example. If you are debugging a library which you don't have the code for and um, you can't really see the code and then you can, can't set breakpoints by clicking on the line, but you can do it from the outline. So even if you don't have the code, so only uh, see the compiled class file, you can still uh, do it like that and say toggle method breakpoint over here. So we have a couple of breakpoints now, and uh, let's start our application in uh, debug mode again. So it's going to stop in the main, and uh, now I just uh, let it run. And the first thing we have is modi modification of field name, right? It's the constructor, so this is kind of expected. I skip over it, and uh, then we have a class load of the boat the breakpoint because they are apparently constructed here. So it's fine, I now disable the breakpoint, I don't really need that anymore. And then we have the constructor of the boat. I probably don't need that uh, as well. And then we have our um, trace point over here. And uh, let's see what's happening, right? It's printing the name of the boats. 
like expected. But this only happens in debug mode. So if you're going to keep it in, in the normal run mode, uh, it will not work. So we are uh, into this uh, exception again. I actually forgot uh, to change the age. Let's quickly do it now and see if it actually works. Yeah, it jumps back to the start before this method and um, Eclipse is smart enough to figure out that something changed. And uh, so we, we are gonna happen uh, to uh, step into the next breakpoint now, which is uh, the modification of the field name and the person. So the field was not private, so somebody is directly modifying it, and this is how I found this location, right? So I quickly commented out, we don't want anybody to modify our name from the outside. Let's keep it running again. Now I got a different boat, it's uh, Oceanic, the sister of the Titanic, but at least it didn't sunk, so. Um, the problem with uh, this is what you see now, I get a different result, right? If I'm uh, stepping uh, back in, in time with this drop to frame or if it automatically rel some, re reloads some code, I met, might get some different results. So you still uh, have to run it again to get the proper results and then I still got the Titanic, right? So um, let's see what happens if I uh, actually go and uh, return the boat over here. So I have some little template here. And uh, we're going to return the boat person. And uh, what we expect now is that we'll probably get a different boat, right? We return the Titanic and uh, maybe we get the Oceanic then. Uh, let's run the application. And now it says, right, something's wrong with my name again, right? So there's the first letter missing. That's uh, pretty annoying, but we still have our breakpoint there, uh, which will show any modification uh, of our name. And um, here it says, set name from the return boat, right? We jumped into the breakpoint set name. It will now show in a weird location because it's uh, Lombok magic, but uh, it'll still uh, show us what we want to know. So there's somebody setting the name, so we want to skip that as well. And uh, let's uh, quickly run it again. And now with an exception again. If I want to directly uh, stop at a certain exception over here, I can also click on the exception directly and uh, say that I want to suspend in caught and uncaught locations. Uh, most of the time you only want to stop in uncaught locations, especially with null point exceptions. You don't want to know how many null point exceptions are actually happening in, in a lot of uh, uh, um, applications which are usually caught. So you typically just want to have the uncaught locations over here. Um, then uh, we go and uh, debug it again to actually arrive um, at that problem in our code right now. Let's quickly remove the person breakpoints, should all be fine by now. And then we're here at the, the, the exception over here, right? But we actually returned the boat already, it says return boat true, right? So why does it still say, sorry, only one boat uh, can be hired at a time? That's kind of weird, so we have to find out what, what's going on here. Um, what we can do now is actually look in the boat hire. We have this uh, hired boats variable over here. And uh, let's actually sh see what's inside there. Uh, the problem with this hash, hash map is I get all these internal fields, right? I don't want to really see all these internal fields. And additionally, I want to keep uh, track of the uh, variable, so I can say, uh, watch this. And it will go over to expressions. You can also uh, write your own expressions like, uh, I don't know, x plus one or something like that. So you can really put code in here. Uh, for now, we're gonna just uh, watch this variable and we're gonna say show logical structure. With the show logical structure, it's gonna show us there's one entry inside, not all the kind of fields which I don't wanna know, right? So there's one entry inside. Uh, this is still me and then I have some boat over here. Let's quickly have a detail formatter for the boat as well. Um, printing the name. So um, it says that I apparently still have the boat Titanic over here. Um, so what we're going to do now, um, I think everything, everything is okay with, uh, with the higher boats method, so probably the error is in the return boats method. So we set a breakpoint on the method directly in this case, and uh, let's go and uh, just uh, run it again from the beginning to make sure nothing changed because we're stepping back and forth. Uh, let's uh, step into here and let's see what's happening. So I have a watch point over here, so you can now closely watch uh, the watch point because we have the boat right now. Hired boats contain something over here and we want to return it now. What we can also do is uh, keep a track on the references uh, to the person itself. So uh, there's another thing what we can uh, say. Um, Java show references, right? Then it will show the references to the person object uh, underneath the variable. 
and it says it's still referenced from the hash map. So it's basically the same which we have over here. Here we, here we have the view into the hash map, and the other way around we have the view on the person. So it should actually disappear, but you know, it doesn't work, but uh, we only know if we are uh, going to uh, to the return point. You can either say uh, F7 or you can say uh, run to line if you want to run onto a certain line. So it's control R, run to line, so we uh, step over here. So um, it should actually be remove in that case. And if we run it again with a remove over here, then uh, if you mirror that, then it disappears, right? So this is how you can monitor your variables. And um, if I go uh, over here and just let it run, I still got the boat Titanic because there's another error over here, which uh, it should be add, not push. So another thing uh, which we can do with our uh, debugging uh, application stuff, um, so it's now working correctly, right? So um, we got the boat Titanic return if we get the Oceanic. Um, what we can do over here is uh, with the debug configurations, I can also say I want to pass some program arguments in there. Uh, I could, for example, directly provide my name, but I don't want to do that. Um, I just go over here and say I want to provide a variable, and I go and look for a system property and configure and say I will something with the user, so it's a username that I want to use over here, so I pass it as an argument. If you want to see what the, problem, uh, what the program is doing now, there's a new button in 2018-09, uh, uh, which uh, says uh, show command line. I'll first have to save it. And then it shows the command line. So if you ever wanted to know how debugging works, you can now show the command line over here, which is uh, kind of nice. And um, we want to change our program now to actually uh, use uh, the argument, which is now provided on the command line, um, pass it in as a, as a name over here, and uh, use it now in our debugging process. So to quickly show it actually works. So it uses, oh, I didn't use a username, I did user home, apparently. <laughs> I matched user home, not username. Um, so what else can we do? Um, if you want to know what actually happens if we uh, get another boat over here, what we can do instead of uh, directly writing the code, because we can't always do that, let's debug it uh, again. Um, so uh, we have our, sorry, let's uh, quickly remove all the breakpoints. Um, another thing which we uh, could actually do is um, what I wanted to show was uh, to set this uh, breakpoint as a trigger point. And a trigger point will deactivate all other breakpoints until this one is hit. So I will only have other, all the other breakpoints activated after I have an illegal argument exception, which uh, can be very nice, but uh, which we don't want to do uh, for now. So I can quickly. Oops, quickly remove it over here, uh, the trigger point again. So uh, where did I want to go? I wanted to remove all the breakpoints over here because we don't need them anymore. Uh, let's go back to the application. If you want to know what is, uh, for example, um, happening uh, with, a, with a string concatenation nowadays, how it works, we can uh, step inside this method over here and um, see what is happening. So it's using a string builder. Uh, the next one which we get is another string builder, and then the next one we get is the get name, right? You usually don't want to see a step into uh, any simple getters. So uh, we have some uh, filters over here. Uh, I don't mistype it, filter. Uh, there's uh, some step filtering over here, and you can say uh, filter simple getters and setters, so that you don't step inside the simple get and set methods. So if you want to step inside, that uh, makes it much, much easier. So what I what I wanted to do in uh, the end is um, actually sorry, actually um, stop at this uh, location again, and uh, then we go to the debug shell, and with the debug shell we can actually write our own code in the context of our current debugging session. So I can say I want to construct uh, a new person dummy. It has to be an uh, age over 35, so I'm just giving it some age. And uh, then I say a hire dot uh, hire a boat for this new person over here. And I can say uh, quickly execute this uh, display. And uh, it will now tell me that it got the boat Titanic, right? I have the Oceanic and the other person now got the Titanic. So this is uh, quite convenient if you want to want to test something without writing actually the code. 
All right, so much for that. I have another example over here, uh, which is called, sometimes you have a lot of uh, chained method calls, right? So in this example, I have uh, my own uh, pizza builder over here, and um, let's quickly run this. So I want extra cheese and ham, and uh, what I actually get is no extra cheese and salami. So there must be some error in there. Uh, let's uh, put a breakpoint over here and uh, run it again. If I now step inside, um, I first step inside uh, into the constructor, right? And then I go into the with extra cheese, but I only want to know what's happening actually in the, in the build method. So uh, what I can do over here um, is say build, mark this, and uh, say uh, step into selection. So I can skip all the previous method calls and directly go into the one I'm actually interested in. And uh, another small example is uh, about concurrency. So I'm uh, going to run this code. And um, let's see what's happening. So it should actually uh, do transfers between uh, two bank accounts uh, every second over here. But it only does it one time, right? So something bad is happening over here. I'm not going to set any breakpoints. Uh, right now I'm uh, just running the application. I'm going to restart it in uh, debug mode and uh, see what's happening. So nothing else is happening. I didn't set any breakpoints. It's not stopping. What I can do over here is uh, actually... Um, Oh, I didn't start it in debug mode. Uh, what I can actually do over here is uh, suspend the application. Then I see uh, all the threads over here, right? So that doesn't really tell me much besides that uh, two thread pools, two threads are actually running and doing something concurrently over here. I can look inside and uh, have a look at the source code. But uh, the main thing what I can do over here is actually um, telling Java uh, to show the monitors. Right? And then it shows what it's actually locking on, and it's directly read, so it's a deadlock situation. So uh, one, of the, um, one of the threads is uh, owning the bank account with instance ID 27, and is waiting for 34, and the other one is uh, locking on 34, and uh, waiting for 27. Right? So this is uh, quite convenient, actually, to see that I have a deadlock situation over here. So let's uh, quickly have a look into my notes, uh, if I didn't miss to show you something. And what else can we do? Um, da -da -da -da. Yeah, there's another example I have. Uh, let's uh, quickly go here. So there's a, a nice project which uh, has been around for some time, which is called uh, Code Mining, which uh, enriches uh, your own code with uh, some ab additional buttons. For example, I can say show run and uh, debug for the main method, which is kind of nice, and show variable values when inlining and uh, show method parameter names. Let's see how this works. Um, where's now the example? Calculator. And, and now I have uh, some additional lines over here, right? I can directly run or debug the application from here. And uh, let's see if I have a breakpoint now. Uh, let's uh, put a breakpoint over here and debug the application. So I can directly click on it. And uh, what you see right now is that uh, it will show me the results uh, from the previous line when stepping through it. It's basically the same um, what this um, what the thing does when you're returning from a method, right? You have this uh, method return value, which is uh, showing here for a couple of releases now. And now you see all the parameter values. So it can be quite nice because uh, if you're uh, jumping to the end over here and uh, not scrapping through uh, time by time, then you still see all the values. And it will also show the parameter names now. So uh, for integer to string, uh, the parameter is called i, for example. So this is a nice addition which you can install into e Eclipse. So sometimes uh, we have to uh, debug applications which are not running on our local system. And uh, like you have seen before uh, with the debug configurations and uh, show the command line, there's some parameters which you can pass to Java to actually uh, make it stop. And uh, this is uh, the one-liner, but uh, there's also uh, a couple of different parameters. So what we're going to do now is uh, debug another Eclipse application. So let's uh, go to the install location over here and uh, look into our ini. 
I still uh, already have the parameters inside. So uh, what you can say here is uh, minus x uh, debug, uh, no agent, Java compile none, and then you say the transport. Um, the main thing here is uh, set it to a local port. So you can also do it with the remote applications as well. Uh, just uh, set it to a port where the debugger interface is listening then. And um, then we have to create a new debugging configuration. Uh, this has a remote Java application over here. We're going to create a new one and uh, set it to port uh, 505. Apply. And then we're going to start our Eclipse over here. And uh, what we can actually let's wait for it to start. Remote Eclipse. One should be ready. So this is our Eclipse, which is uh, still starting. Let's see if we have any null point exceptions in there. Should stop at those. So if you want to know what's uh, happening when loading the workbench, right, you can uh, just pause the application and uh, have a look what's going on over here. And uh, let's uh, keep it running. Ah, see, there's a null point exception happening <laughs> right away. So this is what I'm saying. You, you usually get a lot of null point exceptions which are built into to certain libraries and uh, which uh, just happen all the time. So it's kind of annoying to um, stop at null point exceptions. Yeah, there's another one. So let's keep it running. So um, let's quickly uh, pause this application again and see what's happening. So uh, this is uh, what your Java application is doing here, right? So this is how you can actually uh, debug. Um, if you have a bug in uh, Eclipse itself, you can actually use a different uh, Eclipse to debug your own workspace because sometimes it's kind of hard if you have to migrate your own workspace to, to a different Eclipse with all the settings and stuff if you don't have an uh, OOM setup. And uh, this is how you can just uh, use another plain Eclipse and just uh, debug into, into another Eclipse session. So let's uh, have a, a short look at all the uh, debugging settings which we have uh, inside. And um, debug, debug, debug. Maybe there's uh, something nice which you haven't seen before. Right, so um, the, the one thing which uh, it was automatically doing was sus suspend on any uncaught exceptions. You can actually disable that if you don't want to want to have it. You can also uh, change the policies uh, for new uh, breakpoints to just uh, say always suspend the uh, VM, for example. Um, hot code replacing sometimes uh, works, uh, sometimes doesn't work too well, and sometimes you hit the button where you disable it, uh, the hot code replacing. Here you can enable it again. Uh, there's some timers as well, and this uh, show method result after step operation can really uh, slow down your debugging session. So you might actually want to disable it or uh, set the timeout a little bit lower over here. Um, what else do we have? Uh, detail formatters. So you can uh, set up your own detail formatters not only by right-clicking on that, but uh, directly providing it. Um, heap walking logical structures. You can provide your own logical structures, so like we have seen with the map. Um, this is basically what it does. It uh, provides an, uh, uh, for the key parameter, it says return key. For the uh, value, um, entry it says uh, return get value so you can provide your own logical structures for complicated structures which you have in your own source code. Uh, primitive display options always display hexadecimal values for example if you do some scientific stuff which is also nice and yes the step filtering um, which we have uh, actually seen before. So let's have a peek. Uh, did I show everything which I wanted to show? Uh, now there's uh, one thing which I actually missed. Uh, let's quickly go to our application again and uh, debug this one. Um, what you can also do, I've uh, previously shown you that um, you can um, go and show all the references. Um, this also works for right-click. 
So there's a, a lot of uh, right-click options as well to show all the references or all the instances of a certain of a certain um, of a certain uh, object over here. Yeah. There's also some uh, advanced uh, source code lookup options now in the newest release, which I didn't get to play around now. So uh, if you're not uh, using Maven, for example, to uh, get in the the libraries, then it sometimes has uh, problems to actually find the sources. So there's uh, some uh, advanced source lookup providers now, which uh, will actually help you with using that. All right. So I think this is everything which I have to say for the debugger. Um, actually, in the slides, um, I have some more slides in there. So if I'm going to publish the slides later, um, if you look it up, there's uh, some more details in the slides, uh, not only the things uh, I'm showing. And uh, Last but not least, uh, the best debug I ever made is a good night's of sleep. So if you can't find a problem one day and you're sitting in the office uh, very late, uh, you probably just uh, might want to go home and uh, take, a, uh, take some sleep and then come back tomorrow and uh, see if you can uh, find the error easier. Right. So uh, this was my session. I really appreciate if you could uh, go and log into the website or do it after the conference and uh, do some votes. Uh, feedback is always welcome. You can also contact me on uh, Twitter, give me any comments regarding the session so I can improve it. You can find uh, my code online to uh, actually play around uh, with yourself. And uh, here's uh, the slides. I will actually update the slides because uh, I added uh, some, some uh, new options to it as well uh, for this run of the talk. And uh, is there any questions?